What's up YouTube? Today I'm doing a review on a new SJ5000 Plus from SJ Cam and comparing it to this older SJ4000 and 4000 Wi-Fi. So let's get started with an unboxing. Okay guys, so here is the box of the new SJ5000. I'm gonna say that they did a really good job on the packaging. It's much better than the older version and um, much neater. It feels more, more high-end. So here's the box. Off four, four sides. So let's get uh, started by opening the box. Here it is. It feels like uh, I'm unboxing a cell phone or something. Put that aside. And here is a new SJ5000. Looks pretty close to the 4000, but there's an extra button and it's a lot wider. I'm gonna compare it after when I do a comparison between the SJ4000. Basically, here are all the stuff that comes with the new SJ5000. It's pretty standard. If you had an SJ4000, you pretty much have seen everything except for the cap for the lens that is new. That's enough of the unboxing, so let's get down to what you guys are interested in, the camera. So there is a new SJ5000 camera. To start off, it runs a new M umbrella processor and a 16.3 megapixel Panasonic CMOS sensor. This means that the SJ camera runs on some name brand parts now, which will hopefully lead to some better image quality. To highlight some other specs, the focal length is a 2.8 lens with a 153.6 degree field of view, which I will show you a comparison between the old SJ4000 afterwards. You can shoot 60 frames per second in 1080 and 120 frames per second in 720, which is pretty impressive. For the rest of the specs, you'll be able to read it on your screen. Here is the exterior of the SJ4000 Plus. As you can see on the side, it looks like a bit wider and there's an extra button to the side. When compared to the SJ4000, the front looks identical. The side, as I said before, is a bit wider, which I presume the lens be wider as well. And this is a comparison between the SJ4000 Wi-Fi. When we were to turn to the side, we can see there's an extra button, which the SJ4000 do not have. So here are the three cameras. The middle one is the SJ5000 Plus, left side is SJ4000, and the right side is an SJ4000 Wi-Fi. As you can see on the left side, my SJ4000 does not have an SJ camera in. The reason is because I bought it before they were called SJ Cam, but I can tell you it's a legit version. So here's the SJ Cam of the case. If we were to turn to the side, we can see that the lens is significantly larger, just by two millimeters, I presume. And over here is the extra button, which is a Wi-Fi button. When we compare to this SJ4000 Wi-Fi, the button is integrated to the top button, but now the SJ5000 has the buttons on its own. When we compare to the side, we can see that the SJ5000 is a bit thicker, probably a millimeter thicker. Now we're gonna turn it to the front. The SJ Cam 5000 is also a millimeter taller than the older SJ4000. And there's also an LED in front, which is very useful as you will be able to tell when you're recording. Now let's compare the weight between the SJ5000 Plus and the SJ4000. I can tell you that SJ5000 weighs a bit more than the SJ4000. I presume the reason is because of better build quality. Now that you have seen the size of the SJ5000 compared to the 4000, you can see that the 5000 is much bigger. So, some of you guys would want to know if the SJ5000 goes to the old housing. And the answer is no. It does not fit, so it's much bigger. Can the SJ4000 come in the SJ5000 case? Answer is yes, but there's a lot of wiggle room. So if you were to break your SJ4000 housing, you need to replace it with an SJ4000 housing, not a 5000. Let's compare the top side of the camera now. We can see that the button looks a bit different than the SJ4000. There's a red ring on it now which looks a lot more like a GoPro. The LED is on top right, 
and when compared to the SJ4000, the LED is on the top left. Function all works the same, but just some cosmetic differences. If we return to the design now, you can see that the side looks very similar. The components all look the same, except for the microphone spot. We can see that the microphone is on the top for the SJ4000 and on the bottom for the SJ5000. On the bottom, it looks pretty much identical. The SJ5000 uses the exact same battery as the SJ4000. Okay, let's turn on the SJ5000 Plus now. As it boots up, you can see that it says SJ5000 here. So here is the front page. If this is a recording mode right now, we can see how much memory is left in our camera. What is shooting on? 1080p 33 per second. If Wi-Fi is on, the microphone, which, which one cool thing is that we'll be able to mute it now if we put the top button to the side. And you can see over here, it's muted. We couldn't do that before. The battery life, the date, and time. If we press the menu button, it goes to picture mode. It's now shooting 16 megapixel, which is what the sensor is shooting. Same thing before. This is video review, picture review, and the menu system. This is one of the most interesting parts that we are interested in right now. It will shoot 1080p in 60 frames a second, 1080p in 30 frames per second, 720p in 20, 120 frames per second, and 720p in 60 frames per second. The other ones are non-HD, which we're not going to go over. If we go back out, you can see the megapixel of the camera. It's 60 megapixel. This is what the sensor is, so we're not going to change that. The quality of image, if you want to do it super fine or fine, I like to it at normal. Timer, if you want to place it and take a picture of it by yourself, you can set it for 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. Burst rate, this is pretty interesting. It allows you to take a couple photos per second. So you can see the first one, you see you can take 3 frames per second, 5 frames per second, and 10 seconds. I guess this is perfect for when you're trying to take action pictures. So the highest is 20 frames a second. Auto shoot. Time lapse. You have a choice of uh, one thing to do one second, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. But you have a lot more options now than you had before on the SJ4000. Dual stream, I don't know what that is. Duration, five minutes. This is one issue that I have with the SJ5000 Plus. You only take five minute long clips. Other than that, you can't take, it, take clips longer. This might be a good thing for other people, but for me, I like it. I like having one long clip. Pros to this would be that it'll be easier to edit as there's only five minute section clips, but between each clip, you probably might lose some uh, data between clips. So, Loop record is very important as well. Since you're recording five minute clips, if you want to keep recording, you have to make the loop on. If you don't have it on, then it'll stop after five minutes. Detection, if you want to use a security camera. Zoom, this is digital zoom, so it's probably not a good idea to turn it on. LEDs, there's three of them, and it's a good idea to turn all of them on. One on top, one to the side, and one to the front, which is new, which I really, really like. Wi-Fi LED. OSD, which I don't know what it is. Car DVR, if you want to do it in car mode. Delay, timeout, TV mode, rotate. Mic volume, which is brand new, which uh, you could adjust how loud of volume you want. Date stamp, if you want it on when you're recording. Language, date. Screen, this is pretty important, so it turns off by itself after 30 seconds to just conserve battery. Auto shut off, if you want to turn off the camera after you're not using it. Light frequency, which I like to keep it on 60 Hz, which is standard. Meter, 
where the camera wants to detect to get information from. So right now it's on center, you can do multi-spot or spot, which I don't know what the difference is between spot and center. ISO, I leave it on auto, white balance, buzzer, Wi-Fi, format, default setting, and the version of my camera. So here's all of the inside of that cam. Now we're gonna do a comparison between two cameras. In this test, you can see that the SJ5000 does a better job in coping with the light and dark. It adjusts way more smoothly than the SJ4000. As we turn it aside, we can see it again. Another thing that we notice is that the lens of the SJ5000 is way more of a fisheye. The reason for this is because of a wider lens. The last thing you notice is that the SJ5000 has a higher dynamic range, as you can see here. The light and dark is showing way better than the SJ4000. Now, let's look at some sample clips in 1080p, in 30 and 60 frames per second, in 720p, in 120 frames per second. Lastly, we're going to try out the Wi-Fi on the SJ5000 Plus. We can see that there's some lag with it, but it works better than the SJ4000. The 
button on the phone also allows you to decide when to record. It allows you to change the frame rate and time lapse as well. But overall, I think the S3 5000 Plus can do some significant changes when compared to the S3 4000. The build quality is a bit better, and the added slow motion 1080p is a pleasure to use. I hope this review is going to help you decide to get an S3 5000 Plus or not. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more.